Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at the oil painting technique impasto. Impasto. So let's get into it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Lisa. I'm so excited for you to be here. On this channel we talk all things art content. So some educational, some reflective on life, and some experimental. We love a good mashup of techniques. Today's video is going to be about impasto painting. This is a new technique that I am learning and I'm very excited about it because I am drawn to this technique but it's very against what my brain wants to do. So impasto is a technique used in painting where paint is laid onto the canvas very thickly with either a palette knife or a brush but so that you can see the strokes, you can see the texture. Paint can be mixed right onto the canvas. When dry, impasto provides texture and the paint appears to be coming out of the canvas. It kind of adds depth and this 3D, create, 3D nature to your painting. Impasto can be used with acrylic, it can be used with gouache, it can be used with oil painting. I obviously do it in oils because I work in oils. The first notable artist to kind of start to use this technique, now again notable, probably not the one who created it, but was Rembrandt in one of his self-portraits in 1659. He used this thick layer and application of paint in order to create the texture and the ridges of his face to make him give him a real weathered look and to explain the contours of his face. Another notable artist was Monet. He would use impasto to create a lot of depth in the painting, just adding more and more and more paint to create his paintings. Impasto techniques became really popular in the Expressionist movement or in the late 1800s and became a lot more common. Van Gogh was another notable artist that used impasto in order to create texture and movement and just continued to add much more paint than was actually needed in order to render the images that he was looking to render. Now this here is my first attempt at this new technique. So I was learning a lot and had to work a lot against muscle memory. <laughs> There's a lot less details. I had to get used to putting down more paint. So as you can see in the beginning there, I had to lay out twice the amount of paint because everything in the lights is going on very thick. So you just need more paint in order to do that. It was also, I had to get used to starting a new technique, right? I was learning glazing and things like that, which was really fun and I really love glazing, but it's entirely different. So you get to the end of it and you start to feel like, okay, I got this. I can, I can do this. I can render stuff. And then all of a sudden you're starting in a new technique and it's like, ah, what am I doing? <laughs> you're like a newbie, right? It's humbling. That's good. But it's also fun because then my brain starts to think, okay, hey, wait a minute. Like, what could this be applied to? Ooh, could I mix it with that? Could I match up this? Could I, right? So that's kind of fun. A little bit about this technique. The shadows are not as dynamic. They're not as vacant as vacant shadows where it's just one flat value for the shadows, but they are flat in texture. So you're not adding thick paint to the shadows, which I kind of like because then it really draws attention to the light and also provides a space for your eyes to kind of go and relax a little bit. Right? You add that thick impasto painting anywhere where you want to draw attention to, and that's where your eyes are going to be drawn to first. So this technique also requires a new way of holding the brush, which was very hard for me to get out of that because I'm working against muscle memory that I've been doing for years. You have to hold the brush very flat to the canvas and just kind of place on the paint. It gets laid onto the canvas and then stays that way. You don't disturb it or blend it necessarily. You do those things by adding more and more applications of thick paint. This style or this technique reminded me a lot of direct painting in that you're creating scales of values and colors and using those to create your form shadows. However, things are going on very thick and you're not paying attention to blending edges or getting super soft gradients. Everything is thick and impasto. I always had to remind myself to not put on the paint the exact same way. So I would work in columns, right? And then all of a sudden I noticed that I've got these sharp edges and all of my gradients and that was driving me crazy. So I was trying to remind myself to, you know, change the way that I'm applying the brush strokes so that they're not all going in the same direction because I found that very boring and didn't work well for my gradients because it would create these edges. And so it was making really kind of boxy looking gradients. And I didn't like that. So kind of something I had to really focus on is which direction am I putting this brush stroke on? And is that the direction that I want it to be going? Is it different than what I put on before? Am I creating patterns? My brain loves patterns. And so then I noticed that if I don't pay attention, I will create very patterned things. And so I have to work against my brain a lot of ways. 
I love this technique and I'm very excited to learn this technique. However, it does not come naturally to me. The reasonable reason that I started on my artistic educational journey was because I wanted to render things the way that I saw them in photographs and I wanted to create the details and the texture and the colors that I was seeing and I didn't know how to do that. So now that I've gone through my art, I'm, you know, working through my art education and I'm able to create those details, my brain loves that. But at the same time, my heart is drawn to these really painful painterly type um, style paintings where there's lots of texture and there's free brush strokes. You know, like John Singer Sargent didn't necessarily have a lot of texture in his paintings, but he had, he left his brush strokes in there, which were just so beautiful. And I really love how he could render so much with so little. And I'm really drawn to that, but my brain does not like that. My brain wants details. It wants sharp edges. It wants to match exactly what it's seeing. I found this technique a little bit counterintuitive and I was really having to like work hard to make my brain relax, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But I love this technique, so I'm very excited to learn it, but I've noticed myself having to like slow down and be very intentional with this technique simply because it's working against the way my brain wants to. Like I said a little bit before, I love learning new techniques because it opens up so many more possibilities. So my brain's already starting to think about, okay, how can I add this to other techniques that I've already learned, right? Like what would happen? I was scrolling on Instagram as you do, and I came across someone's impasto paintings and they were so beautiful, but I noticed how simplistic they were. And it was almost as if the shadows were vacant, right? So I was like, okay, well, what could I do with a vacant shadows technique and this impasto technique and to keep it really simple. So I was kind of thinking a little bit about it and trying to play around with what that would look like in my head. If you are interested in that kind of a video, please let me know in the comments below and I will play around with these two techniques, Bacon Shadows and Impasto, and see what, see what happens, see what comes out. Let me know. I love to play around with the background here and adding that, like those colors and pops of color um, into the background to create that kind of like vibration of light kind of a look. And I had never done that before and it was really fun to play around with. And I actually really loved the way this one turned out, but I wasn't sure how I actually did that because I was getting really tired by the end of this technique or by the end of this painting. And so I was just kind of let my brain go on autopilot while I was kind of doing the background. and. Afterwards, I was like, oh, hey, I kind of like the way that looked. And then it was actually through editing this time lapse that I was like, okay, let's pay attention and focus on what I did and how I got there because I tried to do that for my second attempt in this technique, which I have a video coming out and you'll see that one hopefully in a couple of weeks. And that one in the background did not turn out at all. And lessons were learned. So that's always great. But anyways, going back to this one, I was kind of like, okay, pay attention, pay attention how you did that because I love the way this paint background ended up looking and I wasn't quite sure how I did it. So it's kind of a wonderful side, you know, side benefit to filming my process. It's almost like, uh, you know, the post game analysis. Like I actually have learned a lot about myself as an artist, <laughs> watching myself back painting while I, after I paint and I see how it turned out and then I go back and I watch the video of my process and I'm like, okay, this was really inefficient. Oh, I should have done this. Or like, why do I always go jump all over the place? Like I should have focused. And like, there's just a lot of things that I've been learning about watching myself back painting. Anyways, total side note, but an interesting thought. Anyways, I thought I would share. So hope you enjoyed today's video and let me know, have you painted in impasto? Is this a technique that you love? Have you always wanted to learn this technique? Let me know. As always friends, take care and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.